welcome to this video where I'm going to teach you how to throw square bills in Colorado. Stick around to the end where I show you a money saving tip and actually a very key point in, in how to effectively do this technique. This little guy right here won a tournament last season. Um, very similar lures but I've won and done very well for me in the past. Here is a picture of probably the biggest two day total weight brought into a tournament in the entire state of Colorado. I uh, went 18 pounds both days. We weighed in 36 pounds of smallmouth and largemouth, all out of Colorado, uh, square bill. Small little lures like this, they catch giants, but you have to do it right. So let's talk about how I do it. I'm talking about fishing highland reservoirs here in Colorado, uh, horse tooth, Pueblo, things of that nature. Um, but it Go Lake McConaughey, this works. I throw Bandit 100s. You can have yours. This isn't a magic lure. It's a pretty cheap lure. In fact, they've changed the way they, they make Bandits. Um, I've noticed as I've re-upped my supply that the paint jobs are different, and then they've gone to a bigger hook size. But it doesn't matter because you should change your hooks anyway. Um, but I've noticed that it's changed. You know, I really never really go to this size, very rarely. They'll eat this, and when you're fishing for smallmouth in Colorado, even largemouth in Colorado, this size works just fine. Uh, keep in mind, in Colorado, we have one of the shortest growing seasons uh, in the country. So, you know, the forage is smaller that time of year. We, you don't need to, to go big. So, anyway... I prefer the Bandit 100s. Clearly, I'm not sponsored. <laughs> I mean, even my kids don't support me, as most of you know. Alright, step one for throwing a square bill is uh, your gear. I use a 6.3 to 1 reel. Uh, I would go higher in gear ratio if I could. This is a Shimano crankbait rod. Um, it is a 7 foot medium. And um, the other one that I have is also a seven foot medium and they're both fast action. You want them to uh, have that tip to where they can really load up. Um, that is important because we're going to be using 100% fluorocarbon that doesn't have the same stretch as monofilament does, but I would highly recommend using 100% fluorocarbon. So anyways, the brand doesn't matter. The whole reason I have Trilene is because Kmart's going out of business and it was 30% off. Uh, otherwise, I buy P-Line. Uh, I use Seaguar typically, um, but it doesn't matter. The whole point. I mean, I have Seaguar here. I have Trilene here. And I have P-Line here. And it doesn't matter. As long as it's 10 pound, 100% fluorocarbon, mashed with a 7 foot fast action medium rod, uh, that's going to give you the combination that you need to properly fight a fish. Better stop it over there. I'll come over here. Step two is picking out your square bill. Uh, whether you're using the KVD 1.5 or the Bandit 100, it doesn't much matter. What does matter though is color. You're going to find it's most effective from mid May to mid June. There's going to be a 30 day window where I'm going to win a tournament on a square bill. That's the window. And for me, during that time, I'm going with more of a crawdad type pattern, um, regardless of the forge base, by the way. So I'm going with yellows and black backs. I'm going with oranges. I probably actually shouldn't have shown you that one. I do have shad pattern crankbaits, but from that May, mid-May to mid-June, I'm really throwing uh, a crawdad pattern crankbait anywhere in these highland reservoirs uh, that's the time to do it it's going to crush i'm going to win a tournament doing that this season i did it last season 
did it the season before that, I did it the season before that, I did it the season before that. It just, that's, uh, by the way, don't look at my record because I could be lying. Change your hooks. Change your hooks. I do not lose fish. I have a whole laundry list of other reasons of why I don't succeed, but I do not lose fish. I do not come to the way in talking about how I had a fish on a crankbait and I lost it. But here's what I'm going to do, okay? So I'm going to switch hooks. I've already switched out this one, and I'm going to put this one on here. And I'm using brand new ones. It doesn't much matter as long as you're buying like a brand name hook because they're not putting brand name hooks on these. These are coming with stock, cheap hooks. Yeah, they might seem sharp, but they're going to dull quick. And it's going to be that third, fourth fish that you're going to lose. And you're going to wonder why. Well, you're using cheap hooks, okay? So, you'll notice that I'm going to use a round bin. Okay, see the round bin? It's just a round bin. I'm going to use that on the front of this. And the reason for that is to get more. I'm creating a greater, a greater gap, right? And to giving the fish a chance to get hooked. Okay, so see the back, the back of this, the shoulders of this are thick, so I want this to be opened up, so I want a round bend. On the back of it, it's skinnier. I use an extra wide gap hook, EWG they're called, and you can kind of see that the hook kind of comes back in versus just straight out. If that's the hook that they're biting uh, and getting hooked with, okay, that means that they're just coming up behind it and they're just nipping it. And so as they come up and they're just nipping it, that is going to keep their mouth shut, not giving them as much leverage, and you're going to be able to reel them in a little bit better. What you're really wanting them to do is hit it from the front, which is if they're hitting it from the front, you know you're dialed in. If you bring that fish in and this is the hook that's deep in its mouth, you're doing it right. Hooks are really important. Don't underestimate the importance of the hooks. When you do change your hooks out, though, you're going to want to make sure that they're, that they're alternated, and I'm going to show you what I mean by that. On this one, maybe you can notice that out of the three hooks, the back one, one of them is pointing towards you. The front one, two are towards you. On the back one, two are towards me. And on the front one, one is towards me. That's what I mean by alternating. So as you were to hold your treble hook, I'm saying that you want one, like the front one, facing, facing this way, right? But then the other one, you want it where there's two, so you want them to alternate. To keep going on the hooks and the differences in the size of the crankbaits, uh, so yeah, crawdads get way bigger than this, even the, you know, in horse tooth and Pueblo, for sure they get bigger. But here, here's the trick, is that they're still going to eat this one, and if you look at the size of the hooks and the thickness of the hooks, okay, this is going to penetrate easier than this is. This is the type of lure you're going to want to throw if you know you're fishing for four plus pounders or even bigger, really bigger. This is what you would should be using in Colorado. This is the difference. This is legit, I think, the difference maker. If you've made it this far in the video, this is the actual trick. Horse tooth, Pueblo, Carter, the ones in Denver I refuse to go to because there's way too many people down there. This is what you want to do. You need to parallel the bank this time of year, 100%. And by parallel the bank, I don't mean off of the bank, on the bank. You need to be so close to the bank where one rogue wave puts you in the rocks. That's how shallow you need to be. When you get to points, you can kind of come off the points, or it's best to kind of bring it uh, off of the ledge, in my opinion. I have more success. More bites come when it's coming off the ledge. You think of being on, you know, fishing a point, and you're bringing the uh, kind of across, kind of like a 45 or even directly 90 across it. Uh, you know, you want to be digging into those rocks, but the second it pops free, that's, if you get hit there, it's going to be a good one. You're going to want to cover bank, get on the bank, but it doesn't mean you necessarily have your trolling motor on high, but you don't want to have it slow either. You should be going at an appropriate pace that after each cast that you make, you've trolled up enough that 
your next cast still encompasses a portion of your last cast of the water that you covered. I do not recommend necessarily that each cast is to new water. Um, there's a reason for that. I'm not going to go into grave detail on it. That's just my personal philosophy. So you don't want to be going so slow that like three quarters or more of the, the, your second cast is covering the same water that your first cast did. But you don't want to be going so fast that your second cast covers completely all new water than your, the cast prior. So I would say you want to be going where you're casting, burning it in, you're digging it into the rocks. You should be feeling it. Boom, 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 boom. Digging, digging, pause, digging, pause, digging. I use the rod a lot, believe it or not. So if you watch the videos, you pay close enough attention, you'll notice that when I'm throwing a crankbait, that I'm actually, I move it a lot with the rod. You're wanting to dig into the rocks. So there's going to be a lot of digging, pause. You can kind of feel it dig in, and when it hits, pause. But don't let it pause so much that it floats way too far back. But you do want it to pause and pop back, pause and pop back. But it's digging into the rocks. You're going to have to retie frequently. So you should be checking, especially after every fish catch, check your line. But that's what you have to do. It's, that's a slow down the speed up process there. You do want to throw the 100% fluorocarbon. You do only want 10 pound test. But it is going to nick in those rocks with that technique. So you are going to have to stop to retie. So here's the tip of the video. You're going to have to retie. You're going to have to change out your hooks. Okay. But the tip comes in is that you're also going to get snagged. But here is how 100% of your snags will come out. I do not lose lures. I don't. Uh, I mean, I, I do. But so very rarely do I lose lures. Um, and this is why I make my own lure knocker. This is, what, this is what I do, and I'm telling you, it works like a charm. So what you're going to do is you're going to want to get a heavy drop shot weight, the heaviest one you can. I have, I don't know what size this is, but it's a pretty big one, okay? Well, pretty big drop shot weight. One of these little clips, one of these little clips, they come on wiggle warts, they come on chatterbaits, Things like that. You just steal one from a lure you don't like. I happen to make my own lures, so I, I just have these available. And then a swivel, these inside swivel. You're going to put all three of them together, and it's going to look like this. And I just throw it in my pocket. Okay? And when I get snagged, all I have to do is I just go up, and I take the clip, open it up, throw it on the line, clip it, Drop it down right over the lure, right over the top of it. A couple shakes, pops right off every time. Every time. I have buried some really good. There are times where I'm fishing and the bite's so strong that that snag hits and I just, wah! And I, and it just no, and it's not a fish and I, and I really bury it. But typically, um, you know, you're, you learn the snags versus. Uh, uh, versus not snags. Snags. Quick recap. In fact, you probably could have just fast forwarded to this section right here. Seven foot rod, medium, fast action. That's your cushion. That's what that's your cushion when you're fighting the fish. That's what's giving you the play. Ten pound, one hundred percent fluorocarbon. A six point three year faster reel. Okay, square bills. Doesn't need to be big ones. Preferably smaller ones, if you ask me. I'm fishing crawdad patterns, okay? This time, that time of year, period. When you, when you see me mid-May, right around the spawn, and you see me up on the bank, where it looks like maybe I broke down and I'm on the rocks, but I'm still fishing, I'm throwing a crawdad pattern square bill, and I'm also catching fish, by the way, a lot of them. Uh, another way that I do have success in fishing is, uh, is pitching soft plastic lures. And so maybe next video I'll talk about that. Um, and because uh, I do have a few tricks or what I consider to be tricks. But also it didn't work out very well for me last year. So maybe I have no tricks at all. But hopefully you'll tune in next week, next time. And, and, and see, maybe I have something to offer, maybe I don't. So hopefully this video helped. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you next time. Thanks. That's going to save you a lot of money. You're welcome.